Hello, welcome back to the She's Crafted to Thrive show. I am so excited that you are here for this new conversation that I got to have with Annie from Natural Annie Essentials, which is a Black woman-owned and family-operated lifestyle soy candle company based out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. What I love about this story is that Annie started this business out of her home kitchen, trying to help her, her firstborn daughter, who was diagnosed with spina bifida. And her story is so inspirational on just the power of not giving up. And the other amazing thing about this is that I was introduced to Annie through The Handmade Seller a magazine, which this particular story goes a little bit deeper than what was featured in her magazine in the July 2020. So you'll be able to hear even more about Annie's journey and her story and where she is now and even how she fared in 2020 when the whole COVID happened. So I believe that this is going to be a great story for you to tap in to hearing the things that we need to cultivate when we're feeling like giving up, or if you just know that what you're doing is something that you must and have to do and how you can tap into that determination to continue to build a business that thrives. So of course, ladies, stay tuned. Welcome to She's Crafted to Thrive. I'm your host, Nikita Williams. And this show is for all the ladies who are making and creating things that they love. You will hear conversations about the real everyday struggles of juggling life and business while trying to maintain passion and harmony. As women, we have the skill of getting things done, but sometimes we get in our own way. It's here where you'll see that you're not alone. You'll discover that success does not mean perfection. Fear and negative thoughts and challenges are all a part of the journey. And on this podcast, you'll find the inspiration and tools you need to have a life and business that thrives. So before we hop into this conversation with Annie, Annie and I are connected because of the wonderful collaboration we have with The Handmade Seller Magazine, where artists and entrepreneurs can go every month to read inspirational business stories from handmade sellers from around the world, ladies. And they can learn tips of the trade and get updated on the latest industry news and get fresh ideas for the next upcoming month. Ooh, doesn't that sound amazing? So if you would like to show some support to this amazing storytelling business, go ahead and visit handmadeseller.com and use the coupon code She's Crafted to get 15% off. Now let's hop right in with Annie. Hello, Annie. So I was trying, I literally was debating in my head which one to go with. <laughs> Whichever is easiest for you. I am I'm good with, with either one. <laughs> well, I am just really excited that you said yes about being on She's Crafted to Thrive. And I am excited to talk more about your journey because one, I love candles, like love, love them. Yes. And I love that this is a Black woman-owned company. And not only that, the whole family's in on it. So please yeah. tell us who you are, what you do, and we'll we'll just jump in real quick. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. My name is Annie. We'll go with Annie. That's who we work with Annie today. And I'm the owner and CEO of Natural Annie Essentials. We are a life soy candle company owned and operated by myself and my family, as you as you mentioned earlier. So it's everyone here from my myself to my kids, grandparents you know, cousins, everybody's here and we, we just have fun doing the work and it's a pleasure and a joy being able to create something that we can send out into the world where others can get a piece of our family and just enjoy the vibe that we, that we have creating the candles here. I love that. So I want to know the backstory because it yeah. wasn't always just the family, right? Like, no. no. <laughs> so the, the, there is there is a story that you that was written in the Handmade Seller magazine, and I read it, and I was like, man, she's telling a lot of stuff, but I feel like there's some more nitty gritty up in there that I need to get <laughs> in on. Like, <laughs> like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So has this always been? A candle business? No, we did not start out uh, selling candles at all. Actually, the company started back in well, the idea of the company started back in 2014 after the birth of my first daughter, Tiffany. And 
you know, that was kind of where everything started. She was born with a condition called spina bifida and a hydrocephalus. And after we got home from um, the hospital a few months later, her skin was breaking out because by now she was on a lot of medication. So as a first time mom, I'm like, this thing is not going away. The medication isn't working. What do I do? Like, I I felt hopeless. So I'm from Jamaica and my grandparents that I grew up with, they were here with me at the time. And I'm like, what What are we going to do? Like, it's not getting better. And we kind of just went back to what we were used to. So it was the the shea butters, the, the olive oil, the essential oils. And we were just, you know, trying something. And at that point, that's where we kind of got a relief from for her skin, where it was finally starting to clear up. Mm. So I went hardcore into, into these products. I was just making everything. <laughs> <laughs> I started making up everything. It got so I got so deep into it that I actually went and got certified in aromatherapy because I was awesome. buying these oils, girl. I I was going in, <laughs> <laughs> and it was so much that my household alone couldn't consume it all. So I started sharing the oh stuff I was making with with my mom, my family, and my friends, and they were loving the products. And um, someone actually said, "This is so good." It came to a point where I was making this face scrub at one point and a friend of mine, she would order it every month. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what are you doing? You're really using this stuff, aren't you? <laughs> she said, yeah, it's really good. You should put a label on it. So I considered it because mm. I, I it, ever since I was coming up in high school, I always knew I wanted to do something for myself, but I never knew what it was. Mm. I tried selling Avon in high school I ended up using more than I was selling. I mean, <laughs> <That> <laughs> so I, I feel like I had the the girl boss drive mm. since then, but that made it click to me when, when she kind of said it and I, I, I put it into action and I tried it and it, it took off. It took off. So we, we kind of moved forward with that. And a few years later, a few years in, we did a showdown in Brooklyn where customers were, and, and by now I should say, by now I wasn't just doing like the skin stuff. I was doing a whole facial line, the scrub, the shower gel, the the, the moisturizers. And then so, I got into bath and body products. So that's a whole other thing. <laughs> that so, okay. So wait, wait, we got back up a minute. <laughs> Cause you went like, like, okay. So, okay. So it started off as this something to help your daughter. Right. And so yeah. I want to kind of first, Tell us, can you tell us what it is? Like, because I know people hear like labels of what diagnoses are and they're like, I don't really understand what that means. Like, so first tell us what spina bifida is and like how it, like what that looks like for you and your your daughter. So spina bifida is the opening of the spine. So when she was born, there was like literally a cut in the middle of her back. Mm. So the, the, her spine wasn't fully formed. Okay. So they had to do an operation on that. And because of that, it led to the other condition that's called um, hydrocephalus, <clears throat> which is pretty much water on the brain. So because the the spine wasn't fully connected, mm-hmm. the fluids weren't you know flowing to her stomach as they should. Right. So that's what those are. And that caused it. So you were saying... Was it the medication or just the overall everything and how it like was coming out? Like I, I felt like it was the medication because mm. the 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 surgeries had taken care of the you know the opening that was on her body. So I, I I'm pretty sure it was the medication. Okay, so I don't think I realized this before. Like while I was learning about you, that you were Jamaican. So I'm half Jamaican. My dad's from Jamaica. Yeah. And so I always joke around with people <laughs> who are from Jamaica because I always get the things that only Jamaicans apparently get. <laughs> like, <laughs> gangly and cis and all these, like, weird nodules. And you're like, they're like, that's a Caribbean, specifically a Jamaica <laughs> thing. And I'm like, great, thank you. So I'm totally familiar with, like, using, like, the <clears throat> essential oils. For me, yeah. it was tea tree oil was a huge mm-hmm. thing that helped with a lot of that. So when you were going through, like, discovering all, like, all of this world of essential oils and, you know, 
if you ask my grandparents or my grandmother <laughs> when she was alive, you know, they basically ate that stuff. Like it was like everything, everything, right? Yeah. Was that something you had remembered from when you were younger or is that was something that you were like, oh, I need to like rebring this back into my life or has it always been there? Well, it, I, I grew up and, and even then they didn't even call them essential oils. It was just right. oils. Yeah. And they weren't like buying the little vials of essential oils either. They were literally picking the bush from the mm-hmm. tree and probably have it soaked for months, mm-hmm. you know? So, and, and essentially that's really kind of what it is. But I didn't, I didn't always stay on the path where I was going to you know, use what I grew up using. Mm. It wasn't until I had my daughter where I, it's it's suddenly the light bulb went off. Oh, your grandmother used to use this stuff. Maybe it will work. That is awesome. Yeah. So that that was the moment that kind of took me back um, to my roots. So from there, you like were making all this stuff. So first of all, <laughs> you said I just started making all this stuff, but you didn't say what kind of like were you experiment. I can just imagine you now looking at you and like seeing you physically <laughs> like in the kitchen with like jars of pots and stuff. Let's, like, how was that like for you? It was literally like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I after I, I graduated, I had signed up with this company called DoTerra. And right. they give a lot of education on essential oils. Mm-hmm. And they had this Bible. They call it the Essential Oils Bible. And I was it was everywhere. It was always either in my kitchen or my bathroom. So <laughs> if I wanted to make this, so what's an alternative to, to soap that's on the shelves? I would flip through and, and get a recipe and try it. So it was literally just like that. And that's how I kind of cleaned up my house and replaced all <laughs> the chemical stuff with a more natural product. Okay. Okay. So I love that because that is one, if you really like doing in that, like if you really like once you mm-hmm. get into that like space of like, oh, I'm going to try all. See, I'm, I'm the opposite. I think, <laughs> I feel like I like the idea of this. Like I like uh-huh. the idea of being like, oh, I'm going to make my own soap and my mm-hmm. own candles and I'll do it once. And I'll be like, mm. yeah, no, <laughs> that was nice. Like, <laughs> I don't think I want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, I might do it again, so I'll keep the stuff. And then if we move, it's like, you can just get rid of it. Like, you know, it's like one of those things. So for you, that was not the case at all. No. <laughs> You're like, give no. me more. Yes, it, it, I enjoyed it. And the fun part too about the, of the program that I did, they had a section of the course that was uh, for specifically for formulation. Mm-hmm. So now that you've learned about the oils, you know now how to apply it and how to make stuff with it. So, wow. yeah, I was in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So now you're in this world of doing what you love that you didn't know you love, but now yeah. love, right? And yeah. your friends are like, girl, you should put a label on this. And you're mm-hmm. like, hmm. Were you thinking that before she said that though? Was there a little something in you like, maybe I could do this, but she just kind of gave you the permission almost like, oh yeah. I felt like, so they, with the company doTERRA, so they have it where you can introduce the oil. It's like an MLM company. Yeah. So I was buying all these oils. I'm like, I, I wanted to teach somebody else probably how to use it. So I was doing classes. I was doing little classes and just informing people on how to go about using the oils and what oils may be good for what. They like the classes. And I also did like make and take, little make and take events in my backyard. They love that. But as soon as the product was done, they had zero intention of making it themselves. You they know? were me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, they were not into that part. So I felt like I enjoyed making it. So she telling me to try it kind of, put that light bulb off or or maybe give me that permission because I felt like I like this, but what do I do with it kind of, you know? So I guess we could say permission to do it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you kind of like had like connected the dots. Maybe like it was like you were thinking on it, but maybe then something kind of like her saying that was like, oh, duh. Like maybe like in your head, like, oh yeah, I could tell. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, but. It, it, I never had, because I mean, as much as I went to school for business, it never, I never kind of clicked to say, oh, maybe I could 
really mm-hmm. start my own business, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So that gave me that push to, to look into that direction for, for what I was already creating. That is so cool. So at this point, you were making all of the things. So you, I thought you started off with body care body line or was well, it yeah, face? Yeah. Well, I was doing both just for me at home. Okay. Pretty much I was doing everything just for me at home. But the first the first product that I actually listed on uh, Etsy was a body butter and a face, a face butter and a face scrub. So like within those three lines. Gotcha. So when when you decided, so when you decided you were going to do this, like, were you like nervous? Were you excited? Were you like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, how I do I all do those things? <laughs> I was all those things because now I'm like, first of all, how the heck do I even start a business? Like, there's legal stuff. Right. How do I do that? There was also, I have no idea what I'm doing because I am not making it just for me anymore. Right. I'm pushing it out into the world. And then what happens if it burns somebody's skin or somebody's allergic to this? And yeah. you know, so it was a lot of a lot of questioning myself, but I was excited to kind of figure it out and see what it was all about. So so that kind of helped. That's good. So did you find that you had like resources to lean on or was this like a trial and error as you went? So I I did have the program to lean on with with the creation and like the formulation and the the procedures to follow. So I did have some resources that I could use. That's pretty much what kind of helped me because I haven't been sued yet, thank goodness. <laughs> so I was, I, I followed the, the right procedure. So that kept us safe. That kept us safe. But that part did take a lot of research and, and, and testing more than I was doing before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that would make sense because it's like going out to the public. It's not going to your friends. It's uh-uh. like, look, look, you can't sue me because <laughs> you didn't pay for this. So what you suing me for? But now, like, if they start paying for it, it totally makes sense that it's yeah. like, all right, I oh, yeah. gotta really got to step it up. You really got to step it up before you put it out there. So what made you decide to to change it? Like, so like what made you decide to go from skincare, body care to candles candles. like that's a such a I know they like are in the same realm of things but Mm -hmm. I feel like that is such a different lane right you go from personal care to like house care I don't know yeah (laughs) oh right yeah it's 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 kind of like that but for two main reasons at the time when I was doing all this making I was still working a corporate job Mm. and I still had a young a young daughter and it was a lot yeah. The ingredients were a lot. The work was a lot. And it was just hard to keep up with. And the other part was the demand for the candles. So we did the show back in, in Brooklyn where we only had our skincare and our bath and body line. And we we had a super, super amazing body wash that we carried. And everybody would come up and ask, do you have a candle in this body wash? <laughs> they, weren't even, they weren't even buying the body wash. <laughs> They weren't even buying the body wash. I'm like, this is this is some good stuff. They're like, yeah, but it smells good. But I I would prefer to burn it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, that cracks me up because I I don't think I ever would have even thought to say that to somebody. Like, yeah, oh, let me body, tell you, this body scrub needs to be a candle. Like, what? Yeah, let me tell you, people like people have no problem saying what they they want to say, this and when true. you go to these shows, you hear it all. Trust me. So, and my husband was with me um, at that show. So on our way back from Brooklyn, he was like, so everybody wanted candles, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Everybody wanted candles. Maybe we should try candles too. I'm like, who's going to make these candles? We're already making like a million products. Who's going to make these candles? But we, I was Googling it on our way back from the show. And I'm like, you know what? We probably should try it. Why not? What, what are we going to lose? So that very night, we, pur- we purchased a candle making kit on Amazon and came in like two days and we were testing candles. So we tested it for a while. And trust me, it wasn't an, an easy kind of transition because candles, they look simple, but they take a whole lot. 
they are not simple. So Let me tell you. <laughs> they are not simple at all. <laughs> we were testing. We, I mean, at one point, we, f- we found the look that we wanted. That was easy. But then it was, okay, what wax are you going to use? What wick goes with this wax? What oils are you going to use? And it was a hot mess for the first couple of months. I'm like, well, this is way harder than I expected. Yeah. But after a lot of testing and trial and error, we kind of finally nailed it down to to what scent throw we, we liked and to the, you know, the wax and the wicks that we were using. Because so that's we, really the thing, right? Like yeah. when you're DIYing this, like, Last year was the first time I made my own essential oils candles. <laughs> and I was so proud of myself. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, I don't smell a dang thing. Exactly. Like, <laughs> and not only that, I was mad because I had used so much essential oils. I was mm-hmm. like, I don't understand. How is yep. this not throwing any smell? Nope. And you- so, you know, that was, you know, those were those moments where you're like, yeah, that's why I'm just going to buy it from somebody yeah. that makes it with the right ingredients, of uh-huh. course, because if you're worried about toxins and stuff like that, which you should be people. Yes, absolutely. You know, yeah. So interesting. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it, it took a lot, but we finally nailed it. And when we finally introduced it to our audience, they were loving it. And say probably fast forward to a year after, that's kind of all we were selling. Wow. So I was at the crossroad where I was still at my day job. I was still working corporate. Full Um, time? Were you doing full time, like 40 hours? Oh, yeah. (laughs) I was doing full time. And mom. And and mom. And and, and And I would work at night. I would come home and like make stuff at night. Or on the weekends, it was it was nonstop. But I was having a grand time because I love making the stuff. Mm. So I would come home, get my family together, do family time, and then once they're off to bed, I would head down to the basement, and I was whipping away. <laughs> I was whipping away. That is amazing. So, so we did that. But after they they really took on to the candles, and candles were all that we were doing. So I had to give one up. Yeah. So now while I make, you know, my own products at home, I no longer carry the Bath and Body and Skincare lines. We're only focusing on the candles right now. But I've been getting a lot of knocks on the door to bring them back. So we're looking into it as long as we can, you know, have enough people here to cover all the things that we're doing. But I'm not really rushing into the finals of it yet. But it's, it's on our radar to, to bring it back. Well, for first, I think it's just like amazing that you were able to like one formulate that because I can't, I mean, I know how it is like for a business that's not making a product, like mm-hmm. just from an offer, like from, a, I'm a coach. So for me, yeah. just trying to formulate, okay, what is the transformation that I am actually selling, if you will, for mm-hmm. someone that takes a lot of like, time and words and you're pivoting, you're changing this, you're saying this, you're doing this, yeah. your audience is saying this to you and you're like, oh, I thought you were going to get this, but you got that, you know, yeah. it's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think you are expressing that too, as well as like a product, you know, yeah. just having that like, okay, but I really love doing this, but my, my audience is saying yeah. they love and they want this. Mm-hmm. It's Did a lot you, of that. It's yeah. a lot of that that happens, you know? Did you feel like it was like, you were like abandoning a part of like what you love to do when you like switched over into the candles. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean, financially, I know I already knew I should have jumped to the other side way before I did, Mm -hmm. but I just couldn't let it go because it's, Mm -hmm. it's what got me started. It's what I had so much fun creating. And now you're telling me you want candles. In <laughs> the thing yeah. that took forever to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now you want candles instead. So I really had a difficult time parting ways with it, but I wasn't able to keep, to keep up and do both. So I had a coach who sat me down and she said, you know what, look at your numbers. What is working for you? What is it that's working for you? And I mean, I did enjoy making candles too, but it it wasn't like, it wasn't my baby at the time, you know? So it wasn't the thing that you started off thinking you were going to be doing. Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but it it has been good. And, And the good part is 
I'm, I feel like we're still able to, to offer that, that comfort or, or that peace of mind or that aspect of self-care to our customers through these candles. So that settles my mind. If that, <laughs> that helps me out. <laughs> That's really, I love to hear you say that because I do think as, I don't know, I don't think men have this issue too much. Like, I don't think they, like, I don't think they get that attached to their creations, if you will. I think it's a woman thing that we all kind of deal with. And especially if, you know, if, if, yeah, that's a, that's a whole, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. But for you, when you finally made that choice, so when you finally made the choice to go to like candles, did you also see that the demand was enough that you could leave your full-time job? Like when was that pivot of being like, you know what, this is going to be our thing. Like this is going to be our family mm-hmm. business. Well, I actually, honestly, I actually never... I knew I, I knew I wanted to leave my full-time job. That was no question. It was just a matter of when can I afford to leave it. Right. And I was I was blessed in 2018 when my company they were relocating. Mm-hmm. And I got the option of do you wanna, you know, leave or do you wanna be relocated to Florida? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh-uh, you ain't getting me to go to Florida. No. So <laughs> that that was my way out. Mm-hmm. And they helped to push me towards, you know, working harder to my goals and what I wanted to do. Mm. So it wasn't easy, but my husband still had a full-time job at the time. So I still had that income while I figured out what I was doing in my basement. Yeah. So I pretty much just worked on the business and did as much as I could, whether it be marketing, doing pop-up shops. We did a lot of shows. So that really helped to kind of put our names out there and and, and bring money in because you need that. Yeah. You know? So that really helped. So what was the time frame? So I I always like to like have this, like have people share this because I feel like if you're just starting, especially with products, I think when you start off with products, you think, oh, you just need to find that run crowd and it just happens. And it's like, nah, baby. No, 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 like, no. like, nah, baby, that's not how that works. Mm-hmm. So how long, especially once you did the change with the candles, because that's a completely different, you know, mm-hmm. audience that probably was larger than where you were serving. Like, how long did you feel like it took you to finally get like consistent sales sales I think up on to even last year we weren't having extremely you know consistent sales I would I could there were weeks I, I've gone without any sales mm. and I, I remember I was in um, a mastermind and I would go in some weeks and I would just look like I got hit by a truck they were like what's wrong with you I'm like I'm not making any sales Everybody loves it, but there are no sales. Mm. But it took a lot of of those weeks to kind of that, you know, that I used to build because most of the work happens behind the scenes. Most of the work is you finding your customers out there, wherever they are, whether it be social media, it's in the marketing. It's you trying to, you know, pitch yourself to, to whether it's press or however you can get your name out there is you building your SEO on that website so people can find you. So I did a whole lot of that. And I feel like that's kind of what set me up for the traffic when it did come. So it's, for me, it was nowhere near overnight, nowhere Mm. near it. There's something you just said that I get goosebumps like a crazy person these days. I am so emotional. (laughs) Like, I don't even know. Like, I was just telling this to my husband. I'm like, I love the work that I've done on myself. But man, I could use without (laughs) being like crying and getting emotional about stuff. There's something you just said that I think is like, I think people need to say it more. Like, it takes time to find your people. Like, the people that are your people that are going to tell their people Mm -hmm. that you're their people, right? And I think... Also, the other part of that is the work. Like we always dismiss the work that we're doing before we see like the results, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I feel like (laughs) this could be an island thing or something. Like my grandmother used to say, you can work and work and you can can dig, but sometimes you don't see the results of of your fruitage until years later, right? And so I think 
we have, and it's, it's, I think it's just because of social media and everything. We think everything just happens like that, Mm -hmm. but for any business, it just takes time. And I think that's what you're saying. Like, yeah, I felt like I was failing, but when I, when it got to that point where I saw, I was starting to see what I needed to see, I had done all the work. It makes sense at that point. Stand it up, right? Yeah. At that point, it makes sense. So when someone say right now to you, like, oh my God, you're so big or you're so popular or you're famous or you're making all these sales and it ha- you know, they, they probably just found you at that point right. in your journey, but they don't, they could care less. Like, this is it. This is how you got here. I'm like, yeah, no, no, honey. Not at all. <laughs> She's like, no, no, baby. Uh-uh. Sorry. It's me. <laughs> yeah. Were it's there any work. were there any times while you were like going through this where you're like, should I just do this for just like stop? Should I just quit? Should I just or was I, this like, no, I'm gonna keep going? Yeah, I never felt like quitting. I never felt like quitting. I, I had a really bad point where I, I I felt like I was actually literally depressed as if nothing's happening. Mm. I've done everything that I know how to do. Mm. but nothing's happening. And I felt like I shut down at that point, but I was able to somehow get out of it and and continue. I've taken, I don't think I've taken breaks. I've just tried everything. Like you can recommend this one thing to me, girl, try this. I'm going to try it. (laughs) Something, because in the back of my mind, I love doing this. So something has to work. So Mm. I, I don't know. I just keep, I keep going. I keep going. I love oh that that's gonna be a quotable right there. <laughs> something I like I love doing this and I, I know something is going to work. Like there oh, wasn't yeah. a question. It's mm-hmm. just like what is it? Yeah, yeah. Something had to happen. Something had to happen. So and throughout I was determined to make it happen. I love that. I, I totally love that. And I think sometimes a lot of us get lost in the like it's not happening right now. Like yeah. it's like we get stuck in that. Yeah. So were there any things like from a like personal development place? Because I know you mentioned like you were in a mastermind and it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like were there things that you feel like helped you to really keep you going even like in that, like, like pulling you out, like to kind of keep you like, okay, I just have to keep being consistent. I just have to keep going. Were there things that helped you that you invested in for yourself, even though it might've felt like, yeah, I ain't got no money for that, but I got to do it. My mastermind helps a lot. It helped a lot. My family also helped a lot. They know how hard I go. And they can tell when something's up with me because mm-hmm. I'll just shut down. But they're always, you know, trying to rally around me, trying to have me do stuff that will kind of take my mind off of work for a little bit. But so that has been help. I, I really do have a strong support um, system here. And yeah, my mastermind has been like my number one go-to. Like if I am, whatever question I had, that's where I went. And I also had this this book that, that also kind of have a, like a worksheet and reminders and stuff like that that I've, that I've used. So that, you know, those were kind of my, always my go-to whenever I felt like it wasn't happening. So what or who inspires you? I pull inspiration from a lot of weird places. Um, <laughs> so my my family and my kids inspires me a lot because at the end of the day, I'm not d- just doing what I'm doing now for me, but it's for them. I, I have to leave something for them. Mm. So I get a, a lot of inspiration from my family and my kids. And also dance hall music inspires me a lot. It's it's weird. Dance hall music. Yes. <laughs> It's. I feel like it's. Uh, how do I put it? I don't know if it's if it's the way they kind of the 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 way they work or the structure of the business and like collabs that they do. Hmm. I see. I, I'll see artists sometimes do some collab and I'm like, okay, maybe that could be a candle collab of some sort. 
Uh, I don't know. My my brain works in 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 weird in weird ways, but music inspires me a lot. My family and also, I have I have like two Instagram accounts that I follow a lot that I do get a lot of say encouragement from and inspiration. So that kind of keeps me going. So yeah, the weirdness. <laughs> you know, I keep telling. I'm like, I know my you might say like saying out loud to you might feel weird, but yeah. someone else is probably listening to me like I. I thought it was the only one. Like, <laughs> like I thought it was the only one. So this I love that. It just makes me want to create stuff right now. <laughs> I feel that way about music. I love music. Like music yeah. is just, man, like music is just awesome, right? It's just, it's right. the thing. I feel like it's, it's a gift from God for sure. Like music mm-hmm. is just something that automatically makes people feel good and elevated yeah. and excited. And so I think definitely... I do not feel like that's weird. <laughs> I think it's like, oh, I want like I'm actually more curious. I'm like, okay, what kind of inspiration is making you think of a candle? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> my life also and the the whole journey too helps me with like the creation of of candles. Say, for instance, my I have a, a quotes collection, and it's very much based on like my feelings and how I was feeling during whatever I was kind of doing in a particular day. And I tell people all the time, I'm like, it is what it is. That's that's how I felt. Like you, you, people think you always have it together. Um, I'm like, that's not how it works. That is not how it works. So some of the quotes in, in the, in the candle line is like, one is like that done as girl bosses, you know, sometimes we feel like we're going to get it all done, right? Another one is, I have no idea what I'm doing. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Another one, uh, currently overthinking. So it's it's just things that I feel like I've I've been there, I've done that. And it's funny to me. It's it's funny to me. So I don't take myself too serious. So Hey, I think that's the best (laughs) advice that we all can take as entrepreneurs is like, because we don't, this is the thing, right? People think that you get to a certain place, like you just somehow have known, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, the beautiful thing that I have learned just having this podcast is that I've had women who are just starting to women who are like in the top 2% of their industry of whatever. And they're like, I don't know. I'm just figuring this out. (laughs) And you're like sitting on the, I'll Mm be on the, the, you know, on the camera like, "Mm, yeah, we all just figuring it out. Right. That's all. That's all we're doing. And some days you hit it. Some days you don't. Yeah. You know, but Hey, on to the next one. (laughs) On to the next one. Yeah. So I have one question for you. Like fun question. What is the most fun part of your day while you're working with your family? Because I know you love making stuff. So like, (laughs) we already know that. But like, with your family. Oh, they're a wild (laughs) wild bunch. So my, my mom heads up our production team. And so, and she, and her along, along with one of her friends and my cousin, and my husband also kind of helped them out in that area. One day, so with our quotes collection, my, and it's just crazy and, and funny to me, the conversations that I'll just walk in on and I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so they were boring and I think it was, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. That's the candle they were pouring. So my mom's pouring and Miss Sherry is the lady that, that labels for us. So she's asking her, Tamar, what, what, what is this? Because it didn't have the label at the time. So she wanted to know what candle had she poured. So my mom goes, I have no idea. <laughs> she's like, how do you mean you don't have no idea if you're pouring it? So my mom said, I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) So I walked in on like the second, I have no idea and figured out what was going on. And I'm dying. And she's still trying to figure out what scent it is. And my mom keeps saying, I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, no, she's pouring the candle that says, I have no idea. That's the lady. (laughs) <laughs> that's the label and it was just wild everybody was cracking up and I'm like, oh my god my team <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh, I, I love that. Oh, my goodness. I, I, sorry, if, if we were able to capture some of the things that kind of goes on behind the scene back here, it would, we, they could make a movie. It's, I was going to say that it sounds like that would be a good movie, a good YouTube channel. Like it would be a good IGTV stories. Like, or no, it would be a good Facebook series. Right? Oh it totally would be. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, somebody couldn't have captured this moment. <laughs> and when she finally realized what was going on, she was dying. She's like, all this time, <laughs> all this time. But it, it was funny. So just just the the conversations that are had and and everyone kind of helping everyone else out on the floor. It's it's not like oh, I'm pouring candles. I can't make a box. It's mm-hmm. the whole community and and the drive that we that we have that I I really enjoy. I wouldn't have changed it for anything else. That's like refreshing to hear because working with family, I know, has its ups and downs. But I think it's beautiful if you can actually sustainably do that, right? Because not everybody can sustainably do that. No, no. (laughs) It doesn't always work out. But the good thing is we've always been, thankfully, we've always been very close. So it's it's really, and we've been home together a lot. So it's just like, okay, I guess we're going to go to work together now too. Yeah, yeah. So it's been good. So I did want to, I said one question. I did want to ask a question. So obviously in 2020, COVID happened. Yeah. So how did the face of your business like shift and change? Like, was there anything that you're like, oh goodness, I'm so glad we were doing this before, you know, now, or the fact that you guys are a family working together, were Mm -hmm. there some things or pivots you had to do in order to, because you're supporting a whole family, a whole community. So I can imagine the stress of that. So, yeah. So up until, when was it? Like June of last year, like the midst of COVID Mm -hmm. was when our business finally got, I felt like that big break. That's when Mm -hmm. we got really hit. We thought that's when people started to see us. I mean, we've been on Instagram forever, but that's when we started getting a lot of eyeballs with the Black Lives Matter movement and just everything that was happening. We literally blew up in June of last year. Hmm. And at that point, we were still working out of my home. It was the, we had a room in the house that I used for my office, my basement, my entire basement, and actually, and also my garage that we use for the production of the candles. So yeah, so around mid-June, I was out there and we were, we've never poured like that before. Because usually it would just be me, you know, trying to do everything by myself. My parents would help me out if I, and my, my husband, if we, if we had extra stuff that I, I needed help with. But at that point, they really had to step in and they were pouring and they were helping me just get stuff out to a point where we had to, or like our first pallet of, of jars and wax, they, this whole huge trailer just pulled up to the, to the, in our, in our street and hauled it into to our garage. So my mom goes, where are you going to put these? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so it was literally COVID and all that was happening that pushed us out of the garage wow. into, you know, where we are now to our new studio space. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So talk it, about. It, it changed everything for us. You know, here I go getting goosies again. I have heard a lot of those stories. Like I've heard a lot of people say, and I, I experienced the same thing last year mm-hmm. was my best year in my business ever. Yeah. And I I mean, and I've been coaching for eight years and I've been in the online space like ever, like ever, ever, like before even like before (laughs) coaching Nikita, like ever, Mm -hmm. ever. And I was telling my husband, I was like, man, that is some crazy stuff. And Mm -hmm. for you to be able to kind of like manage that because you kind of set up your foundation to be stable enough for you to do that. Like that's a really big, I don't think people appreciate how important that is right because we hear a lot of people who get success like that and then like Mm -hmm. can't sustain it and then I'm done like the business is closed it goes down and so I do think there were more of a lot of those stories where a lot of people saw that kind of shift in their their Mm -hmm. life and their business their life might have felt like it was falling apart and obviously a lot of us had a hard time last year but I Mm -hmm. feel like a lot of businesses felt like they 
learned a lot or they pivoted a lot. They did things that they said, I would never do. Yep. And then they did it and they're like, why did I say I would never do that? Like, <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> what happened, right? So I, yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that because I do yeah. think we all sometimes need to be woke. Right. <laughs> In a lack of better words. <laughs> Ab- absolutely, absolutely. Well, and nothing, and nothing, nothing happens. My my grandmother always tell me nothing happens before the time, because I don't know if I would have been able to to handle it the way I did last year if it had happened before. Hmm. So, yeah, per- patience is is really a, a virtue. Really don't feel like it when you're going through it but. <laughs> yes I feel you on that that yeah. is so true well thank you thank you so much for coming on it's been a pleasure thank you tell us where we can find you online and all the places you can find me on my website it is naturalanniessentials.com I'm also on Instagram I'm on Instagram a lot at Natural Annie Essentials, where I share a lot of the behind the scenes, the the crazy things that's happening in our studio, the fun stuff. So yeah, Instagram. I'm also on Facebook at naturalanniessentials.com. Awesome. All right, ladies, that's a wrap. I so enjoyed this conversation with Annie and I am so thankful to The Handmade Seller Magazine for giving us this amazing collaboration series so that I get to meet even more women that are killing the game and doing what they love and crafting a life that they love. If you want to know and connect with her outside of this podcast, you definitely want to go to our website as she's crafted to check out our show notes because she's given us a little gift, a coupon code for 10% off of anything inside of Natural Annie Essentials. So in the meantime, like always, my friends and ladies, remember that yes, you are crafted to thrive.